guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Seminary here recording on Friday, June 28th. And we are here in the midst of the offseason. It's officially the offseason. The draft is over. All the stuff is over. We've got summer league. We've got free agency. But it is officially over. Season over. I feel like as much as like finals is the distinct point, like the draft is like the last conclusion because it was so close to everything else. But how are you doing, Sam? Doing good. Excited. To get into the free agency period, I think that'll give us a lot of fun content. I don't think the Celtics are going to be able to do all that much fun stuff, but watching players bounce around in the summer is really the only reason to get up in the morning once the season ends. So uh, <laughs> there's always that to look forward to. Looking forward to Summer League and um, just going forward, lots to be excited with, with the Celtics, of course, just winning the championship. So definitely a good day, fun show for you guys. Going to talk about. Uh, Chris Tops had his surgery, some summer league stuff. The schedule's finally out. Then we'll get into some around the league rumors after we do the emails. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to start with Chris Tops Porzingis. Uh, Brad Stevens talked a little bit more about it, and there was an update released uh, the other day when he was talking with us after the draft. Um, surgery went great, per Brad Stevens. Said it was a success- successful surgery, should be ready to roll in five to six months. Uh, which puts it, what is that, like December, right around Christmas, we're going to KP Christmas present. Um, My favorite part of Brad's statement, however, was him saying, well, let him do his WWE entrance when he comes back verbatim, which was just hilarious that he's in on the bit. Like, it's just, it's phenomenal that that was a part of the You guys are all shit reporters because nobody was like, you guys going to give him a theme song? (laughs) Nobody followed up. No. No, he didn't follow up. You're just a moron. <laughs> it's not us <laughs> being shit reporters. It's you being brain damaged. Uh, of course. <laughs> KP should be back by the end of the year. Um, successful surgery on the injury that no one in the world ever has, uh, which is phenomenal. But um, good that it, it went well. Sucks that it had to happen, but hopefully he'll be all right by the time he comes back next year. It's also good that they did it now. Do you remember when Rob had surgery, but it was like in September? And we were all like, what the fuck? Why yeah. did they wait so long to have surgery? If they just did it in June, he would have been back by the beginning of the season. So they took care of it ASAP. The recovery time is going to be a while, of course, with it being like December where you're looking for him to come back. But they did everything they could to get it out of the way early, which is the most important thing. And it's glad it, it's good that it went well. And it sounds like he's expected to be back at full capacity, which is also a big sigh of relief because an injury that rare, you don't always know if they're going to be ready for it. I mean, they've only had what 32 cases since 2006. They don't have a ton of practice doing these surgeries and, you know, repairing this. So to, to hear that it sounds like it's going to be a smooth process is a good thing for all of us. Yeah. Hopefully, like I said, everything went well. It sounds like, but hopefully it's like, you don't want another Rob situation where it's like, oh, he's back, but he's not really back. You, you want him to be back. Like, Chris, they need to treat this as if once he comes back, he's good to roll. Obviously, there'll be minutes restrictions and stuff like that, but you don't want him to be out again in like two weeks. Like, this needs to be a cut and dry, whatever. And you don't know how it's going to affect his, the rest of his career. Like, you don't know how impactful the injury is going to be moving forward. But all you can do is hope, treat it correctly, and then uh, go from there, I suppose. But that does beg the question, should they bring in extra help? Obviously, <clears throat> they drafted Anton Watson. They're going to ideally re-sign Luke Cornett and Xavier Tillman, bring back Nami Keda on a team option, and they'll have Al Horford still. So in the ideal world, they'll have plenty of big man depth. However, if they could snag someone in free agency uh, on a minimum contract, that could be a deal. Brian Robb of Mass Live put together a list of potential guys with an old friend right there, front and center for you guys to uh, mm. to look at here. But um, we're going to take a look at these realistic free agent targets for the Celtics at the center position. Again, as put together by Brian Robb. Shout out B Rob. Uh, let's take a look. So obviously he ties there. Um, we'll start with Mo Bamba, Sam. Thoughts on Mr. Mo? He has a cool <laughs> song. I think we've done this dance before too. Was it last summer that we were like, what if they brought in Mo Bamba? Because we were thinking about maybe it was trade deadline stuff. I don't remember, but I know I've done the well, he has a song thing before. And he didn't play a whole lot for Philly. He did get a little extra run when Embiid went down midseason, but 
he hasn't really panned out the way everyone had hoped in the draft. I remember when he, he got picked in the top five. People thought the Celtics might trade up and go get him. There was rumors of that. It's good that they didn't. He hasn't really panned out. He could be a decent backup break, ga- break glass in case of emergency guy because he has similar like high peak skills to Porzingis. Like he, he likes to try and stretch the floor. He's a decent <laughs> shot blocker, but ultimately he's not able to move well enough. He's not as disciplined on defense as he needs to be. I don't hate the idea of Mobamba in theory. He's got a seven foot 10 wingspan, which is insane. Um, he can shoot the three a little bit. He just hasn't put it together. Um, and it feels like if you're the Celtics, maybe you bring it like you have your, your young chance guys in, in Tillman and Watson. Maybe you get like a veteran guy. Um, that said, another guy, B. Rob brings up Jackson Hayes, mm. uh, who is also young, very athletic. Uh, he is a more—I don't want to say switchable because I don't think he's the best uh, on the perimeter, but he is quicker. He's definitely more athletic. He's only 24 years old. Um, played this past season with the Lakers, and I think he had an all right season uh, with them. In a yeah, good played, game against the Celtics. Mm-hmm. Played in 70 games, uh, averaged four and three rebounds in 12 minutes a game. Shot 72% from the field. Doesn't shoot threes. Um, I wouldn't hate this. I, I don't I don't dislike this idea at all. He's a big guy. Uh, he can move his feet well. He's athletic. I like it better than Bamba if we're, if we're ranking them. Yes. But, but Hayes, yeah. Bamba, current power rankings. Again, he had that monster game against the Celtics at the Garden. Like He got a billion offensive rebounds right off the rip and proved he could impact the game. Like If this is a guy that you're just going to have deep on your bench – it's probably just as good as having Cornette. Cornette's probably a little better just because he's been here. He has chemistry with the guys. They kind of know how to play together. But Hayes, if you're looking about upside, like he's still young. You can still kind of shape him. You can still work with him. Like he's not going to be perfect, but he is athletic. He's strong. And he's, from what I remember, pretty durable. Like he doesn't seem to get hurt a lot. I don't remember tons of reports of him being injured. I mean, Obviously, when you're not one of the top stars, I'm not going to hear about him missing a game or two in L.A. So he's he's right. definitely a better option than Mobamba for sure. Yeah. Uh, next guy up, Mason Plumley, spent this past year with the Clippers, uh, and I think he was no, he wasn't traded. Uh, he got hurt. 33 year old um, veteran center, good passer, stand up rebounder. Like he, he is. When you think of a oh yeah, this is a backup center, you think of Mason Plumley. Like genuinely, like that, that just. Five points, five rebounds in his games. He, he's like I said, he's a good passer at the big man position. He plays stand up defense, but he's not great. He, you know, he can catch some lobs, but he's not that athletic. Like Plumlee's just fine, and that is fine. But that's what Mason Plumlee is. Yeah, he he is what he is. He does make decent passes, though. He 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 is like good at reading the game. I uh, never forget when he would go out and transition and try and push the ball. I remember there's just some highlights of him like throwing. They call it Point Plumley. They call it Point Plumley in Charlotte. He was fine. Did he <laughs> do the great. underhand free throw? He's had some no. fucked up free throw stuff though. That is He's that I know for a fact. Shooter. He's not a good free throw shooter at all. Still like Hayes better. Plumley feels like a more realistic option though, for sure than than Hayes does. <clears throat> Let me see. Mason Plumley free throw. What do we got? Yeah. Definitely not great to have a 5,000 view video of you airballing a free throw on the internet. That's probably not uh, what you what you want. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, no. He missed real bad. <clears throat> yeah, that's um, <clears throat> some special stuff. However, he didn't even hit the net. I will say, Mason Plumley might have some of the best role player highlights I've ever seen in my life. Like if you just he has some loud dunks and stuff. He's a strong guy. Not even that, but he does spin moves. Let's see. Uh, let's see what do we got. Yeah, right here. Slickest big man handles. Watch this. Let's take. Uh, uh, we're watching this. Getting hit with the ads, Jack. No, no, no. Wait, how did you just skip that ad? Lovely. Huh? How did you just skip that ad without actually skipping it? If I click on it, the video. Yep. People and the ad comes and then up. just go back. Yeah. Oh, teaching the ways. But yeah, we're gonna watch some Mason Plumley audio. With apologies. I can hear the sound. Plumley. Yeah. You can or can't hear this? I can. Okay. Cool. 
Listen to Eric Collins talk. He planted in the ground. He was looking for a DHO. Oh, no. Was it there? The Not reverse Kenberg. between the legs. And rise up and throw it down. Flight 24. Gets away from saving Lee. Tell me the Celtics couldn't <laughs> use this kind it. of creator. Jeremy Grant to Plumlee. <laughs> Plumlee with I, a drive. I remember that How about that? That was electric. Big time yeah. play. Our That's Pistons. So sick. Saban Lee, give him a lot of oh my God, for he got for this to happen. Timothy Luau, Cabrero. It's almost like TLC kind of mimes getting hit with the ball. Like, Plumlee, like, fakes throwing it at him, and it's, like, as if he followed through. Plumlee's so fun, man. Shades of Yoko. As sweet as it gets. Wrong foot. Knew the clock. Maybe for the vibes, you get Plumlee. Drops the mic and walks off the, the New Blake board Griffin? at the same time. That will do it. The two with the free throw. I don't know if he has that same. Oh, no. Oh, no, Zion. For a jam. Another Mason Plumley dunk. Th this is a fire video. This was a great call. I told you. It's just so Plumlee. funny seeing a seven-foot like rim runner guy do this. Clunky white guy. Yeah. Just play. Plumley. Plumley. Behind the back. Dish it up. Dime. The tree, and that could get. The Denver Nuggets energized. Timer, baby. Come on. Challenge there by Jokic. Man, they're Jokic. running the Jokic game, Plumley. Okay, Plumley. Look at the pass. I haven't seen, I haven't seen that since. When did they put Shaq on commentary? What are we doing? That must have been one of those TNT <laughs> players only. Mm. Remember when they had that and like um, Marcus Morris hits the buzzer beater to beat OKC? And nobody says anything. It's just Kevin McHale going, oh! <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't remember that. Uh, all right. Plumley, B-Rob, next guy, Mr. Daniel Tice. <sighs> yeah. That'd be, uh, that'd be Oh, nice. they actually tried to go get him last year. That I did not know. Did did we know that? Uh, I don't think we necessarily knew it, but I think it, it doesn't surprise me. Like, he was a free agent. You bring him in. Nice backup. Could have played when somebody got hurt. Probably would have played in the playoffs. Um, missed out on the ring, Daniel. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active users. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community. If you're looking for promotions, Prize Pick has got you covered every single week. From lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays to help your lineup hit, or getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Sam and I use Prize Picks all season long. You guys saw it before all of the pregame shows, but now it's the offseason, so we got to find some other things. Take a look at the Red Sox, Jaron Duran. Never know. He's been pretty good. Might as well take a look at his hits. You look at Caitlin Clark, the WNBA. You look at Alyssa Thomas, the WNBA, the Connecticut Sun, right there. The points, more or less, who knows? They're pretty good this year. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. He's fucked up. He brother. needs one. Come get a ring. <coughs> Do Shout we have any Daniel Tice, Tice highlights to throw on? Or are we just just a highlight pod now? Mixed tape. Let me see. Let me see. I feel bad for the audio listeners, but let me see. This is the last one because we love Daniel Tice. <laughs> Daniel Tice. Can we do the one of him getting kicked uh, in the face? Uh, sure. <laughs> kicked. Daniel Tice kicked. Can I just type that in? Will it come up? Yeah, that'll well, come right. Up. <clears throat> oh yeah, here we go. Poor guy. Brown, want to make her down in the corner. What a time the bubble was. Tyson, you got. I took a hard shot from. Yeah, Sean Michaels. Yeah, he literally did. Toronto still he ate it. Boston gets some scrambling. Wanamaker's able to drive. I don't want to make the man. heart of that zone. Siakam comes to help. Nice. <laughs> Actually, kicks him in the face and then. Hits him on the arm with his foot. I guarantee Tice you. Tyson's actually called for a foul on this. Like when I played <laughs> yeah, he is a legend. <clears throat> Man. Shut I up, need Tyson. him to come back for no other reason than Frey's bringing, bringing back the, the Fat Tice picture. Love Fat Tice. All right. What else B-Rob got? <clears throat> Was that it or is there more? Andre Drummond, Sam. Uh -huh. Mr. Drummond. Greatest rounder of all time. 
greatest rebounder ever. Uh, a more proven commodity than Demiash Kade at this point, but I'll have plenty of suitors for the minimum. Yeah, people will probably go after him. Like he, they'd have to compete, and he'd probably go somewhere he can play. Are we sure he's really like year. a good fit? Are we forgetting the, the Tory Craig? He just fucking ripped the ball from him on the fast break and essentially dunked I, on him. I have never been in on the Andre Drummond hype. Oh, so many people got in on that at the buyout market trade season. I just I didn't get it, but just a huge name. That's why, like, he was really successful early in his he's career. He's always tied to the Celtics and those rumors. He's still a fucking awesome rebounder for the minutes he plays. He played 17 minutes a game last year and got nine rebounds per game. Mm. Like, he's he's getting a rebound in like every minute and a half. That's really good. <laughs> that's that's pretty damn good. Um, next guy, Alex Len. Eh. Mm. Eh. <laughs> High turnover, limited offensive player. Good start. I, I don't I don't know about Alex Len. I like Drew Eubanks though. I'm a I'm a fan of Drew Eubanks. He's 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 like um better defensive Mason Plumbley. Okay. If we're sticking with the compare white guys. He's the one that got guys. punched. <clears throat> yes, he did get punched. Can take a punch. What's yep. better, taking a punch or a kick like Tice? Kick. Okay. I'd rather take kick. Also, like B Rob says here, play a big role off the bench and he could go back there for a raise. I feel like the yeah. Suns aren't in a position to let anybody walk. No, they're <laughs> they not. They need to take who they need. Especially with the CBA. Like, you really can only get players in so many ways. And if you have them, you might as well try and keep them. Yeah. And Eubanks was fine. Like, last year he averaged five and four in 75 games. In like limited minutes, 15 minutes a game, like he's fine. Um, you probably keep him around if you can. Uh, next guy, Gogo Batadze, or last guy, mm. they Gogo Batadze. Um, not a shot, he ends up here. No, no, uh, he's a good player, <clears throat> he's fine. Five and four, five and five, 60 percent in the field, big body, plays defense well. I wouldn't hate it, I just don't think it's realistic. I don't thought he was older than 24. I gotta be honest with you. <clears throat> No, he's only twenty four. He looks old. Uh, he's he's about to turn twenty five, but yeah. Um, he he and Tillman have like old guy face. He was drafted in twenty nineteen. Hmm. He was drafted one, two, three, four picks before Grant Williams or after Grant Williams. Sorry. Favorite on the list, Sam Tice. Obviously, Tice. Non Tice. I really think um, Plumley would be all right. Just, just for what they need him. You know what I mean? We did just watch the highlight tape, so I see it. Well, like, he just, he, like, is strong, like, can can get up and dunk quick. Like, he has a very low usage skill set that can work. It, the I think the that problem with be... him, clearly, is anytime he needs to be a high usage guy. I think that would be almost too close to Cornette. Like, I think at that point, you go get Jack okay. Hayes, bring yourself something different, can switch a little bit, athletic, play, get some lobs up. I think Jackson Hayes is my favorite, despite the fact that it's probably not super realistic. But anyways, um, next thing is Celtic Summer League schedule has been released. Um, I'm trying to find a picture just so I can put it on the screen. But um, it will be up. Here we go. First game of Summer League. Thank you, Yahoo Sports. Uh, Saturday, July 13th versus the Heat. Monday, July 15th against the Lakers. Uh, Wednesday, July 17th against the Hornets. And then Friday, July 19th against the Mavericks. Um, so those are the games that have been announced so far. There's a fifth one that's going to happen as well. But we don't know the date for that. Summer League's coming, though, Sam. Throw it around the corner. I want to know what sickos are staying up till 1030 to watch a Celtic Summer League game. That won't be there. Oh, yeah. I mean, if we were home, we would be. Absolutely. But. Yeah, we're probably. Be there, so we don't have to. <clears throat> probably. I don't no. know. I got work on. T- <clears throat> no, you know your dumbass would watch it. Sam froze, but he would watch it. You you would get me. You would get me. I'd be like, <clears throat> yeah, they got to beat Bronny. And I'd be all in. Yeah, we'd be watching. We'd be doing a recap after the game, brother. Come on. <laughs> we recap in the summer league games? We did last year. Okay. Bet. I'm in. Here we are. Uh, but yeah, some of these schedules, July 13th, 15th, 17th, 19th, uh, 6.30, 10.30, 5.30, So I'll read them again for the audio listeners. Saturday, July 13th, 6.30 against the Heat. And who's their rookie? Who'd they get? Kill- Khalil Ware. Monday, July 15th, 
against the Lakers and Brody James and Dalton Connect at 1030. <clears throat> Wednesday, July 17th against the Hornets at 530 against Tijane Saloon and KJ Simpson. And Friday, July 19th against the Mavs against somebody. Who did the Ma- who did they draft? <laughs> they draft three kids. Who did the Mavs get? <clears throat> I know they got a guy with the 60th pick, but I don't know. Did they make a first round pick? Oh, I guess they didn't. I don't I don't believe they did. Oh, they I think they traded it in the um in some deal. Because yeah, they didn't make a first round pick. And they yeah, they only made one second round pick as well. They drafted uh Ariel Hookporty. But he was traded to the next even. Yeah, so the Mavs have nobody, so never mind. Anyways, <laughs> let's move on to the email. Uh, a reminder, as always, you guys can email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com with all your thoughts. We love hearing from you. Make sure to send us one there. Um, I have to pull up the email, though, because I only have my personal email open. Here we go. <clears throat> all right. First email we got is from Mr. Joe Abbey. Joe Abbey? Abby? Sorry, Joe. Uh, A-B-I. Um, let's see. Oh, this is Joe. This is the guy I met at the Al Horford event. Uh, yes. Shout out, Joe. He says, Lefty Laser. Afternoon, guys. First of all, Jack, thanks for the shout out at the end of the pre-parade episode. I got you, Joe. Thanks for coming up. We appreciate it. I was very fun. Uh, um, great meeting you and Noah among the mob attempting to get chicken from Al. Taylor Shireman, great pick from Brad that crate uh, from that Creighton system. An underrated aspect of his uh, of this is that they took him in the first round, so his contract is locked, guaranteed, and contributes to the luxury tax calculations. To me, this means Brad must really like him to guarantee him a roster spot and contribute. I also think this means at least one of Cornette, Tillman, O'Shea's fee will be gone. Of course, it's not real to keep the roster one to one together over a year. This also provides a developing alternative in the event that some bum ass team looking at you, Philly, offers Hauser a fifteen plus million a year or something. Given the recent KP surgery and assume that Al drew load management, which players on this roster do you think step up? Do Walsh and Kata start to play rotation minutes? Do they match between Maine and Boston? Does Baylor crack the end of the rotation immediately? Thanks again, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Um, I don't necessarily know if Baylor will get a ton of run. I think he'll be back and forth from Maine because he's on a standard deal and not a two-way. Um, I think he'll get similar to Walsh treatment, although he'll probably play a bit more minutes. I think Tillman's going to get more minutes next year. I think Cato will probably see a bit more run next year, although he kind of saw a lot of run this year earlier in the season. So I think you'll see similar to that again. Um, And I think actually I didn't even think of the idea of Drew um, load managing. I don't think he'll do it a bunch, but that could actually open up minutes for Peyton and Shireman a little bit more, which is fun. I think Joe makes a good point about Brad being willing to give him a guaranteed deal with the first round pick like they could have easily traded back and got him still probably so his willingness to do that makes it very clear that he's interested he told you guys at the presser on thursday he was thrilled that shireman was there at 30 couldn't believe it and they were so happy to pick him and you know for us i feel like that says a lot from the outside where you're just like okay they they were clearly targeting this guy this was someone they hoped to get and we're going to get a really good look at him in the summer league as far as the load management stuff goes I think it's a really good opportunity for Walsh. He's somebody who I feel like we all have a high expect, not high expectation for, but we have high hopes for going into next season, having, you know, all of last year, plus the summer to get a little bit bigger, to get a little bit more skilled and maybe to be able to contribute at the big level is huge. We, I wrote a whole article about Brad Stevens making this roster roster sustainable, locking down all the top guys with these extensions and then drafting well to fill out the remainder of the roster is kind of how you're going to have to do it going down the line with this new CBA. And Walsh is a big part of Boston being really deep for years to come. If he's able to come along, it's going to make it so they have so much more off the bench. So I want to see if he's taken any steps this year. And I think the load management stuff should give him a good opportunity to do so, especially because he's supposed to be a defender. So he can kind of take on a little bit of the responsibilities of both of those guys. And Kata. I'm excited to see him too. I thought he was fun to watch last year. Kate is cool. I'm excited to see new guys get chances in the rotation, especially as the Celtics look to give some guys rest and with uh, KP out for December. So uh, we'll see what happens. Next one, Ryan Hall, Tristan and Aruna. The Celtics mm. signed Tristan and Aruna to add uh, to an exhibit 10 contract. So we'll play in summer league. We did a video on this 
yesterday as you guys are listening to this so if you'd like to see our thoughts on him fully you can go check that out you guys probably know this but just a heads up thoughts much love brian we talked about it in the other video but non really a great shooter he's got okay form good driver didn't see too too much of his defense but he's clearly an athletic guy i don't hate it it just seems like the type of guy who might be a fine g league prospect but not really ever going to put it together at the nba scale yeah, and it doesn't help that he's on the older side. Like he's going to be twenty three, like these other 24. two draft picks were. Oh, yeah, twenty four. Okay, he's up there. Fifth year senior is the point. But yeah. So if you're like banking on development, you have less of that to feel good about. But he's aggressive. He's clearly very strong. He can finish pretty well. He does a great job with his left hand, despite being right handed. So there are some positives to look at. When we did the clips and we we reviewed it all, there wasn't a ton of defensive highlights. So one thing to keep your eyes on in the summer league is how well he actually stays in front of people. And as as we do this email check, we just received a, another email. We did. Also, he's he's just turned 23, so I was wrong. Um, shout out RJ, getting it in zero minutes ago. Uh, welcome to Virtual August, reading between the lines. Morning, folks. Now that the draft is finished, let's look at the logic puzzle that is the rest of the Celtics offseason. KP is out until the new year. Neither Luke or X are under contract in the Celtics draft a pair of wings. Well, Anton is a forward slash big. So, but still, uh, conclusion, Brad isn't worried about his big man depth. Well, uh, I'm not claiming insider knowledge, but if conversations with either Cornette or Tillman had stalled out or taken a turn for actively uh, antagonistic, Celtics would have looked for an upperclassman big who can help inside. Anton Watson kind of is that, but he, he's on the smaller side. Yes, Anton. Okay, here we go. Yes, Anton Watson is experienced as an undersized five, but his selection seems more like a developmental move than drafting for immediate assistance. I don't know about that. He's 24. He's not, or 23. Like, he's not a guy, like, super young. Additionally, going after Watson rather than a taller player gives me some hope that the Celtics brass sees need me as continuing to make strides in his own improvement. Again, this is my speculation only. What is your thoughts? Be well, RJ. Hey, gang, let me tell you a little something about game time. Now that the NBA season has come to a close, you got to get yourself out to an MLB game this summer. You want to go to Fenway. You want to go to your local bar park. Game time is going to get you there. They are an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes tickets easy to get. Prices on Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Who doesn't love using it? I sure do. I use my Game Time app to get my dad tickets for Father's Day, and I got a fantastic deal. It's so easy to use. Again, you can get those last-minute deals. They have flash deals and zone deals. It's easy. You can take a look at your seat's on the app to see what the view is going to be like before you get there. You don't want to get stuck behind a pole. I'll tell you that happened to me once. It was not fun. Again, last minute deals are fantastic on game time. You can save up to 60% off buying those last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Download the game time app, create an account, use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Um I think they're confident in Nimi. I think they're confident in Tillman and Cornette and stuff like that. I think Anton Watson could play the big man position. I mean, you have to remember he's 6'8 and now Horford's only 6'9, so it's not like that's an unfathomably small height for a big man to play. Um but I I, I also think they're fine with Cornette Tillman and need me holding down the fort while KP's out. Yeah, I think where that could get a little spotty is the back-to-backs where Al inevitably rests. But the good thing is you'll get more of a look at the other big guys. Like, shout out to Cornette. Anytime he got extended minutes last season, felt like he took advantage of it. He had that monster game against the Pistons, I think. Or no, not the Pistons, rather, the Raptors. Because it was the next night. And he, he started, he had essentially the game ceiling dunk like he played really well Tillman had the game winner when he was out there in clutch time only game winner of the season for the Celtics don't worry about it and then uh Nimi if he could just be a little bit more disciplined on defense and not foul as much he really could be an impact guy off the bench like we've seen him put up double doubles he's really fun to watch he does loud dunks he's aggressive on the offensive glass just honing in the discipline very similar to a young Rob where Rob was really jumpy and was eager to block shots and stuff. And he really hit his stride once he got that under control. It feels like Nimi has a little bit of that in him too, but he's on the older side too. Yeah. I- I'm, I'm pumped to see what Nimi can bring to the table. Um, it'll be a fun season at the big man position. I'll say that. 
anyways thank you all for the emails we appreciate it very much make sure to email us again hptcpod <coughs> at gmail.com let's go to the nba section and we'll start sam your pistons made a trade tim hardaway jr uh, and three second round picks i believe it was to detroit mavs get the flexibility etc um <coughs> from mark stein of the stein line uh, the Mavericks, with some newfound financial flexibility after securing the Tim Hardaway to Detroit trade that I wrote about on Tuesday, are another team intent on exploring the feasibility of signing Clay Thompson once he makes it to free agency. Denver and Philly also interested in Clay. Denver doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, well, with KCP, <clears throat> it does. They, want to still replace... have, they still wouldn't have the money, I don't think. Maybe Clay wants to win. Well, I guess no. Uh, How much here. is playing with Jokic worth to you? Not... 20 million, Not 20 million dollars. No. <laughs> um, yeah, fine for the Pistons. I, I I guess you get three seconds out of it, so I guess that's the real highlight. But it's just kind of Charlotte weird. did something similar, sure. right? Like they took in Reggie Jackson, Reggie Jackson got a bunch yeah. of seconds from Denver. That's a much smaller contract, though. Well, it's only one season for Hardaway. It doesn't really matter. Still, they're not going to be able to sign anybody now, or they will, they but like care. less, less options. Well, and uh, on a, on a mid tier. If you're the Pistons, right? Best case scenario, your team is mid tier this year. You want it. You want to take sure. a, a climb up the ladder just a little bit, where you're not bottom feeding again. You hope some of your young guys take a step forward, and you play some coherent basketball. Whoever the new coach is, which will not be James Borrego because he's pulled out of the uh, decision making process for the Pistons. Yeah, but whoever it is, hopefully they can get the boys buzzing and they compete for let's just say like a play in ish spot. Whether or not it actually happens. If you're the Pistons, that should be your goal. With that being said, Tim Hardaway Jr. should be somebody you're excited to add for whatever it is for the one season because he can give you an offensive punch that you probably didn't have last year. I saw a stat used today that was like Tim Hardaway Jr. made like 225, 255 threes. The next highest guy on the Pistons roster was Ivy with like 120. So he had over 100 more than Ivy. He's somebody that can provide a little bit of extra spacing and if he gets hot, we saw it in game four of the finals. Yeah. yeah. Garbage time, not garbage time. It doesn't really matter. It's fun to watch, and he gets going on offense. So could be an interesting fit, but good for them getting the second-round picks. I mean, we've seen Brad Stevens get in on those second-round picks for years now, and it's going to pay dividends, and, and teams all around the league are now using them as trade chips because of the weird CBA restricting them and actually having those draft picks makes it easier to build out the remainder of the roster. Yeah. And I mean, tomorrow junior has been nothing if not consistent for the past three seasons. Oh my God. I'm looking at these numbers. 14.2, 14.4, 14.4. Yeah. Shot 30, 39.4, 40.1, 40.2 from three or overall. Overall. Oh, yeah, and then shot 33.6, 38.5, and 35.3. So that three-point shooting has been really uh, <clears throat> up and down. But 3-7, 3-5, 3-2 for rebounds, 2-2, 1-8, 1-8. You know what you're getting with Tim Hardaway. They know what they traded for, basically. But, yeah, it's fine, I suppose. Just getting the three picks is fine. Um, <clears throat> Raptors have extended Emmanuel quickly. Five years, $175 million, $35 million per season average annual value. I love Emmanuel quickly, but oh my God, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's so much money for quickly. It feels like big overpay. You kind of have to. You kind of have to. I'm trying to pull up the Raptors spot track right now just to figure it mm -hmm. out because I don't know shit. I haven't looked into the CBA since last summer because it hasn't been relevant. But I can tell you. Tying up all of your cap space and Scotty Barnes, Emmanuel Quickly, and RJ. Probably not the greatest moving forward for your success. Listen, I like Emmanuel Quickly a lot. I think he's a really good player. I think he's a good defender for his size, too. He averaged 17, 4, and 5 last season on 43, 39 splits. He's, he's good. $35 million is a lot. And it's not like he's 21. He's 25 years old. Like I, that's, just, that's just a lot of money. That's a lot of money to pay Emmanuel Quickly. So right now, Spotrack says they have negative fifty nine million in cap space, which is right in the middle of the league at sixteen. They have another eighteen point seven million before they hit that first apron, and twenty nine and a half million before the second apron. 
So going forward, it's not going to be super easy to bring in more help for these guys. You're going to have to draft well. You have to hope Grady yep. pans out. They just traded for Davian Mitchell. They who, did get Jonathan Mobo. So they got Mobo and they got Ehrlich. They got two of our guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jacoby Walter in the first round. They'll be fine. Like it's it looks like they're headed for mediocrity for a long time. Which sure does. I mean, you have to you have to really hope Scotty Barnes gets better because they just paid him. I think too. I think Scotty Barnes will pop. I think RJ Barrett will keep getting better up there. I think he had a really good second half of the season when these once he got traded. Um, I think quickly will get better too. I, I think Grady Dick will get better. Like I I do think they'll like be a playoff team in the next three years, but I don't think they'll be like a make it past the first round playoff team with this core. Right. And there's just so many other teams that are like out of the playoffs, low in the East that are taking better measures to set mm-hmm. themselves up to compete. Like Toronto has players, but they're not really knock your socks off players, but they're paying them and they're locking themselves into this uncomfortable salary cap tightness. Whereas like we just saw Washington on- offload like their entire team. They traded everybody away. They traded Avdia. They brought in Brogdon, who's going to be expiring soon. Like they're just looking to bring in young players and try out players and see who they want to keep. And it's interesting to see all of these different teams try and approach the new CBA in their own way because some are really taking swings at it. Like we saw Phoenix last year go all in on trading for guys and they brought in Bradley Beal. And Brad Stevens talked about like how the Celtics did the same thing, but they did it right. Like they found the right fits. They didn't just trade to trade. And they allowed themselves to get all of those things out of the way before the new CBA went into place. Now you can't really do that as much. So these teams are going to have to build yeah. organically. Yeah. It just It just feels like a lot of money for a guy who is good. And uh, put it this way, like $35 million isn't going to be a lot of money, like a lot, a lot of money in a couple That's years. That's more than Derek White <laughs> is set to make in an extension, right? Yep. Slightly. Yep. I guess you're banking on the progression and his being younger and stuff like that. We'll see. We'll we'll see where that lands them. Uh, The Portland Trailblazers are reportedly exploring the market for Robert Williams trades. This stinks. Celtics aren't going to trade for him. Stop rubbing your hands together. Uh, Portland expected to field offers for Robert Williams despite his injury history and Aiton despite his well, Aiton history. Grant is thought to be available, but the price is high. Portland is not actively trying to move his contract. <clears throat> That's from Matt Moore of Action Network. It makes sense that you're trying to trade Rob and or Aiton or just exploring it because he just drafted Donovan Klingon. Um, I could see a team out there maybe wanted to take a chance on Rob. The Celtics don't have any means to do it or else maybe they could be that team. Um <clears throat> Aiden, I think, is an underrated piece at this point. Like, I do think Aiden's a good player. I think he's a quality player. I think he can. He's a good defender. He's a big body. He can switch good for his size. There was a DeAndre Aiden trade that I mocked up for something recently. I forget where I sent him, but I do think there are teams that could use DeAndre Aiden. I'm trying to remember where it is that I, I like said, oh, I think this team could. As you look, use it. Yeah. Do you remember when DeAndre Ayton couldn't go to the game because he was snowed into his house? That was insane. It's too icy. <laughs> that, that was that was crazy. Where did I, I right after the season ended, Worldwide Wob put together this like compilation of the great moments throughout. And I forgot about so much stuff that happened. And it yeah. was like just <laughs> and I was watching it like at my girlfriend's house and I was like, You don't understand, like some of this stuff is just so funny. Like with no context, it just looks like nothing but like yeah, you don't understand. This was hilarious when it happened. Uh, I mocked him to Memphis, but that was before they drafted Edie. I think it makes sense, regardless. But seeing Edie at Summer League is going to be fun. I'm excited to see Edie. Edie will be a good time. I'm trying to think of who else would want to trade for DeAndre Aiden. Like, I, I do think there should be teams out there that might or should take an interest in him. Like, if you're the Brooklyn Nets, do you just take a chance and say, "Hey, we'll revive his value"? Take. Well, like if you want, if the Blazers just want to get off his contract, you say, "Hey, here's Ben Simmons for DeAndre Ayton." You get off a year Simmons. earlier. Well, you know what I'm saying. Like it depends on where the value for DeAndre Ayton is at. Like Ben Simmons for DeAndre Ayton would let the Blazers get off his contract a year earlier. The Nets would take a chance on a guy because they're clearly going nowhere. Maybe I don't know. If you're the Blazers, do you say, "Hey, Ayton for Julius Randle"? Who says no? Who says no? If the you're the Knicks, no, you kind of need stupid. that insurance. No, no, no. If you're the Knicks, you say no. That's stupid. But um, Julius Randle's too good. He, he's a much better player than the other Aiden. I'm just being an asshole. Uh, yeah. Does OKC know. need an Aiden? 
<clears throat> could they uh, benefit from that? Do they have the money to make it work? I don't know if they have the money, but it feels like they could benefit from a little have bit of some, bigger of a body than Chet. They have a bit of flexibility because they have money for free agency. So I think that they could technically trade for him and just absorb him into their cap space. Um, so do maybe you do that if you're but, them. No, I'd rather sign a bunch of smaller guys, like just split the money up into like 15 million, 15 million, 5 million, something like that. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. Maybe it's another Utah project. Utah, just, just kidding. Send him to Utah. Yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But um, I think Aiden's a good player. It's just finding a space for him that makes sense. Uh, Washington, maybe. I guess Washington, you can just like pit anybody there and be like, figure it out. Yeah, they're not trying to win anything anytime soon. Yeah, I don't know. That is weird. But yeah, Rob also could be on the move. He's on a fine contract. But I will say, as much as it does suck, because I love both of them, this does feel like another wow. Brad traded both these guys before their injury history is really ramped up. Like it really calculated move by Brad. Seriously, think about it. Like Marcus missed almost all last year. Rob can't get back on the court. Like he got he played the value game real well, and he got championship because of it. Good for Brad, man. I mean, those were two building <clears throat> trades, like literal pillars in the Celtics championship run. Like getting Holiday was probably what put them over the top. Like had they not gotten Holiday, who knows if they win the championship this year? They don't. I don't think they do. I, I, I think, think they players. need. I think they need Holiday. <clears throat> Holiday was huge. Uh, next thing, Brandon Ingram to the Kings? Question mark. Uh, Kings are supposedly <laughs> interested in Brandon Ingram. This is from Jake Fisher. One team monitoring Ingram would be Sacramento. The Kings have been weighing paths uh, to acquire various wings. Sources said from Kuzma to Levine to Ingram. Could be another option for Sacramento to explore. Also teams interested in Brandon Ingram. Atlanta Hawks, Philadelphia 76ers, Cleveland Cavaliers. All of those. I feel like Ingram has kind of gotten a bad rap now. I Especially from you, which is okay. We're allowed to have guys that we don't believe in. He's fine. But he's DeMar DeRozan, which is fine. But you're probably not going to win if he's your top option or top two option. If he's your third option, I think you're in a fine place. If Brandon Ingram is the third option on your team, I think you're a quality playoff team. Fine. But he's just DeMar DeRozan. That's all he is. What the hell would Atlanta do with him? <laughs> what are they doing with him? Seriously. Pairing him with Trey Young. It would probably just be a DeJounte Murray for Brandon Ingram trade. The, these <laughs> trades are probably... Philly is just cap space and picks or whatever, like blah, blah, blah. Cleveland is probably like Darius Garland for Ingram would be the idea, which I don't love, I but I guess it would it would be a way to spread the positions out because you got two really small guards and you would have like a bigger wing at that point, which whatever. Um, and I, I would love that for New Orleans. And then Sacramento would be like Barnes and Herder and a pick for Ingram, which is like fine, I guess. I don't hate that for either team, actually. Um and then, yeah, Atlanta would be Chante. Like, the Kings, I don't hate Brad Ingram for the Kings. I don't hate Zach Levine for the Kings. But when they're the number one player, like, that's probably not very good. Like, Brandon Ingram is just, like, he would give him an extra scoring punch. He'd be another big-ish body in terms of height on the wing. He's obviously, like, a toothpick. But, like, if you're rolling out De'Aaron Fox, um, <clears throat> Devin Carter, Brandon Ingram, Keegan Murray, and Demontis Sabonis, I'm feeling pretty good about my chances to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. If you're rolling out Darren Fox, Zach Levine, uh, insert small forward here, Keegan Murray, about bonus. I feel pretty good about my chances to maybe even make the second round. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel good about your playoffs chances. If you're rolling out Brandon Ingram as your top two scoring option, meh. <laughs> like, just, eh. You're the Pelicans. And, yeah, you're going to have to sit him <laughs> in the play in. Tough. So, the, the major <laughs> problem with trading for Ingram, he needs a contract extension. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, it's like, I hate the Zach Levine contract. I think it's atrocious. I think it's gross. I think it's far too much. However, you're no longer at the very beginning of it. So if you trade for Ingram and then you overpay him, you're like, wait, we don't like this guy. Then you're not going to be able to get rid of him because nobody's going to want to pay him. No, nope. especially if you're trading him after paying him that there's a reason for it. No team's going to be like, oh yeah, we'll take that contract that you just gave them and you're already ready to get rid of them. Yeah, we'll take them right off your hands. That's not going to happen. It's a very risky move and it's probably riskier than we all give it credit for. I think he's a fine player, but I think trading for him at this point is a very difficult spot. 
even though it would feel like you're going to be buying low, you're not because you're tying yourself into that long term or you just let him walk, but then you wasted whatever you gave up for. Yeah. Like what, what would you trade for Brandon Ingram? Like, like what, if you, what What teams are you looking at? Yeah. Like what team are you looking at and say, yeah, this is our missing piece. Like we want to pay this guy 30 million a season to be a part of our core. That's the problem. Because See, exactly. if if I was looking to trade for Brandon Ingram, I think I would be like a Houston or like a Detroit, like a team that feels like they are on the way to getting back up into the playoffs or something, right? So ideally, this isn't real life. Ideally, you would do this with two years left on his contract. You can play out the first year, play out the second year, and go from there and see where your young guys are at while you have given them for two years now a serviceable player to play alongside. Like the same Mm -hmm. alleyway where I feel like the Tim Hardaway thing isn't entirely just a salary absorption from the Pistons. Like they may actually benefit from having him because he can give them a little bit more and help the core of young guys kind of have someone to lean on scoring wise. I feel like Brent Ingram could have done that, but. Now it's too late because you would have to pay a lot for this guy. He's been an all-star in the past. I hope so. I hope he has. I think he has one time. And then you would have to re-up on him. And I don't think I want to re-up on him if I'm a team like that. So it gets really difficult. It's probably like a desperate team, like somebody like Phoenix, but it doesn't make sense because they have KD, like the Clippers. They're desperate because they have this new arena that they want to put people in the seats for. Um Let's go east. Brooklyn doesn't make any sense. They're trying to be awful. It wouldn't make sense to trade for him now. Toronto's paid all their guys. I guess if you could get him in there in some capacity, like if maybe it would work. If you're Indiana, do you say, okay, let's take one year, see if it works. We'll figure it out next year. You know what? Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. And also Philly wouldn't be that bad, depending on what they have to give up. Like he, like you mentioned, he would be the third, third option. Yeah. Like if you're... Nah, it gets so hard with the Pacers. Yeah, they don't really have the money. Or, yeah, it's awkward. Because you'd probably have to trade McConnell. And as stupid as it sounds, I don't want to trade McConnell for Brandon <laughs> Um, I don't want to trade Miles Turner. I don't want to trade Neesmith. Like Jairus Walker. But then with the Pel- – yeah, it gets awkward there. I like the fit, but it, it doesn't really feel like a trade could happen. Um. I don't know, man. Think. I'm not. I'm not like bored. I'm thinking. No, it's just it's it's nothing. It's realistically it. Like there's nothing. It's just <laughs> great. You're Brandon Ingram, are you like counting down the days for expansion so the the superstars get a little bit more spread out in this league? You get a little mm-hmm. bit more respect. Perhaps, perhaps you are. Uh, all right, Ratless time. Ratless time. What you got? Rat list, I think I'm addicted to mints. So at my job, they have a jar of the Lifesavers wintergreen mints. The first thing I do when I get into work every day is I go and I grab five mints. Right off the rip. Rip through them fast. Each day I go into the office, I'm probably eating double digit mints. My buddy and I consistently talk about how many mints we eat. So I Googled it and I looked up, is it dangerous? Is it dangerous to eat? Can can you see side effects? Will it affect you if you eat too many of these Lifesavers mints? This is what I got. Google says, eating too many Lifesavers mints can have different effects depending on the type of mint. Peppermint, which is not what I'm eating. Wintergreen. Wintergreen mints contain methyl salicylate, which can be toxic and cause problems like fever, vomiting, and respiratory issues. Small children and cats can especially be affected, and doses of less than a teaspoon can be toxic. Wintergreen can also worsen stomach and intestinal inflammation and may cause allergic reactions in people with asthma, nasal polyps, or an allergy to salicylate or aspirin. So, it can really fuck your shit up if you eat these mints and you're addicted to these mints. I'm addicted to these mints. How many have you eaten? How many do you eat a day? I'm getting double digits every time I go in the office. Yeah, that's fucked. 
like me when it comes to eating mints at work is the wilt meme of all the stats. That's a problem. <laughs> it's that's just a, addicting. A I I want to, you know what? I bet you they're actually like legitimately addicting. Like there is an addictive aspect to the mints because <laughs> I'm not the only person I know that has been like, I think I'm like, I can't have these. I'm addicted to them. See, you know what my problem was in high school? It wasn't necessarily an addiction. It was like, I guess you call it addiction. I couldn't go like an hour without chapstick. And the reason is... I need to get chapstick it, for Vegas. <clears throat> chapstick. Uh, don't. I refuse. I don't use chapstick anymore. I don't. Because chapstick... What did you do last time we went? Did you get any? Mm, I think I did. You but suffered? I, I, no, I think I got some. <clears throat> but like apparently some chapstick i heard this from somewhere so take it the greatest salt maybe i'm a moron i'm pretty sure they put like something in chapstick where it helps like the short term but over time it dries out your lips again so you just buy more chapstick it's like dasani yeah what 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 the fuck is what was dasani doesn't dasani have like a little bit of like just enough salt in it to where you get thirsty again so you get more water <clears throat> oh i didn't know that but that makes sense um yes some chapsticks can buy a, a dry out your lips um so you can apply and it becomes a vicious cycle. Like it's fucked. And so I would be in high school just like desperately needing it. Like when I was uh, younger. So I just, I don't use it as much as I can. Cause I, I just, it's, it's a cycle. I hate it. I feel like it's a need in Vegas. I get a, I get a plan for Vegas this time. Cause I got fucking smoked when we went in December. I lost my voice. My lips were dry. I was consistently sniffling. I got absolutely bodied by the climate in the desert mm -hmm. it was brutal it was bad it's gonna be because it was cold time. too yeah i don't know mm. nervous um ratless my dogs uh mm. so i i went to duncan before i got home before recording this i was in a rush because i had a meeting and then we we're doing this and then i have to go back out for a haircut in like 30 minutes um i have two coffees in my hand and going to the back gate i open the back gate and they are there waiting and they push the gate and I just spill coffee all over me oh, and I no. didn't have time to change because I had a meeting or this. So I, I just had like it's dried by now. You're in the I coffee shirt still. Yeah, it, it got mostly on my pants and like the side, but OK, it just all over me. And I'm just you I'm smell like, like coffee pissed. Uh, I don't think so. There are worse things to smell. My like. shorts do. My shorts okay. smell like coffee. Um, I was so bad. Cause like I had, cause I had like one in this hand, one in this hand. So I'm like, I put one on here with like, it, I'm like my chin holding it up because I have to open the gate. So I would go eat, and it slams into me and I like catch it. And then I'm just sitting there with like it leaking out and dripping all over me. I was so bad. It was so fucking annoying, man. Cause I, at that point I was like, I was already like frustrated. Cause I'm like, all right, I got to go back to get a haircut later because they were busy. I have to, you know, scramble home for this meeting. Duncan took a million years with my order because they're, I, I don't know. They were stupid today. Um, I was rushing. I had to do this. I was like, I was like, I was already like in a like <sighs> frustrated mood. This is why I was, if you watched the video yesterday, that, that was why I was mad at the tier list so much. Cause I was fresh off getting coffee spilled all over me. Oh. And so I was just like in a shit mood, like really mad. Um, I didn't know that. I was just like yeah, pouring it on <laughs> laughing. At I know. I, I, I was just, I was in such an angry mood. Um, yeah, they just fucking dumped coffee all over me. I was pissed off. Do you I have like a ring it. camera or anything? No, I wish. That'd oh, if you funny. had a ring camera, that'd be content. No, I wish. You need to recreate it for the cameras. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, Ratlist, um, Kyle Flipowski's Filipowski? girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't even like a funny haha -ha, Ratlist. This is some creepy whack shit. So That's you insane. can help me tell this story because I don't sure. know all of it. But the the synopsis, the basis, the the gist of it is Kyle Filipowski has been seeing this girl, has been with this girl since he was, what, in high school? She went to prom with him as a senior. He was 18. She was 23. Okay. And since then, she has groomed him and continued to groom him into becoming a Mormon. So he gets drafted by Effectively, job. yes. And um, in the process, has had him cut off his entire family. Mm -hmm. 
So his brother went on Twitter yesterday and like was talking about it or like hinting at it, et cetera, et cetera, saying he reached out to like Jonathan Giveney, who's like ESPN's draft guy, yes. to try to give him the story, but he hasn't had a way to get in contact with him. But it's just like this whole fucked up thing of like, it's like the PJ Washington, Brittany Renner situation. You remember that? No. Like he was in high school and she was already like eyeing him. And so by the time he was in college as like a freshman, she was like 23, 24, and they were like dating. And then Should she I know who kid- that is? Brittany Renner, it's his like kid's mom now. Okay. Because she was pregnant and then I don't think they're even together anymore. But like it's effectively the oh, this kid's gonna be the NBA. I see it. Let's I see. Watch. So she was you know manipulating him to essentially cut his family off so she reaped the rewards of him making the leap. I don't know if Brittany Renner had him cut his family off. I just know she no, I'm talking had about his Phil child. Yes, effectively. So she could uh Yeah. Get the bag. Some creepy weird shit man it's so it's so weird it's so creepy is Filipowski was he a one and done no no two, two. sophomore <clears throat> yeah very weird man very weird yeah his girlfriend looks older too like she looks older than him like significantly not like like she she's, looks super she's old, got wrinkles but she like like you can tell that she is older than he is you know what I'm saying yeah, a little bit. I can see it. I want to see. Let's see. Yeah, he's a, he was allegedly estranged from his family. Um, it's just such a weird situation, man. I want to see the age thing. Hutchinson is reportedly turns uh turning is twenty six. Filipowski mm-hmm. turns twenty one later this year. So for context, if he was eighteen in high school at this point. She would have been what? 23. 24. 23, 24. 24. Because yeah, he's yeah. still 20. He turns 21 later this year. Oh, I see. That's. Well, so if let, he was. Let's, let's hope that she wasn't 23 when he was in high school, Jack. If he. Well, if he was 17. Yeah, no, this is this. I don't like this at all. I'm not a fan. That's super, <laughs> super creepy. Super weird. Super fucked up. Um. I don't know if I have anything else. Uh, I'm trying to think. Nothing at the Airbag Center. Obviously, traffic is traffic. I, I gave Noah a ride home because she doesn't have a license. The traffic in Cambridge is so fucking insane. It is. It was nuts. It was like 7:30 at this point, and I was we we're just sitting there. Like like it, it it was all the way backed up. That that was some of the most insane traffic like non-highway traffic i've seen you know what i'm saying because like obviously you'll get like stop and go on the highway but seeing that on like a normal street just in the city and also i i am the biggest if you have room walk regardless of if there's a walk sign these people just don't have room and they go anyways like these people are like i'm gonna hit you like like they're they're willing to oh yes like there was there was one time i was pulling up to a stop sign and the sun was in my eyes and I like stopped. And as the sun went, I was like, oh, there's a person there. Holy shit. Like, you're just going, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. Yest- yeah, yesterday I was leaving work. And uh, to get to the highway from my building, you come up a hill and there's a crosswalk. And to your left is like all these people that just got off the highway. So it's it's very difficult to get out. And I finally mm-hmm. get a gap. There's nobody behind me. And then this fucking guy just walks right in front of me. Does he have the right of way? Yes. But if you're a pedestrian, I truly don't understand why pedestrians have so much like leeway. Just walk like behind. I get it, but I don't get it. Like, like he could have just walked behind your car and had like no time exactly. taken out of his day. Exactly. Like just because you have like the right of way because nobody wants to see you get launched by a car doesn't mean <laughs> you shouldn't have to like respect drivers and walk around the back and like let's not say just... nobody. Some people might want to see it. <laughs> I might get a kick out of it if I see the video. I'm not going to lie to you, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be the one behind the wheel when. when no, 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 no. I'll no, tell you course, that. Of course, of course. Uh, but yeah, dude, just like stared me down. It's like, all right, dude, like go ahead. Then did go you ahead. have to wait again because there was? I had no to gap wait. Anymore. Yeah, I got stuck there. It's brutal. That's tragic. That's so fucked. Uh, when you bring Noah home, do you have like a strong enough like friendship where? you're comfortable playing your own music or like, do you feel weird about it? Cause I get that. Do you, is that a, not a normal thing? Like no. when you have people in your car, like you're like, I don't want to like play music that they don't like. 
Uh, I get that a little bit, but I think Noah and I have similar music tastes. So like, she okay, listens to Noah Khan. She listened to like I was listening to Sabrina Carpenter, and she likes that. So I like we just have similar music tastes, which is fine. So I don't no, know not who really. Sabrina Carpenter but... is right. You don't know who Sabrina no. Carpenter is. I don't know who Sabrina Carpenter. You wouldn't is. like it, so it's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> you you wouldn't fuck with it. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. I just throw on whatever. Uh, um. Uh, Ratless Laker like fans. So. Sure. Bronny got drafted yesterday, which we didn't talk about on this show because, like, good for him. Everybody knew it was going to happen. Like, it is, it is like objectively a really cool thing that a father and a son. Like, I know you don't like sure. the father, like whatever, but like the fact that a father is playing with his son in the NBA is like objectively insane. That yeah, that if it was, was any great. other person, I'd probably be happy for them. Whatever. But I saw a tweet that was like, "Damn, LeBron's teammate really came out of his nuts." <laughs> there are a lot of LeBron teammate mother relations tweets which actually can go on the rat list like the first one was funny but then i saw people like trying to do the lot, same thing it's like okay like everybody saw the first tweet it came from a barstool guy like you're not fucking doing anything like that mm. and so ratless lakers fans because they were like celebrating that their the brawny draft announcement tweet got more likes than the celtics championship tweet wait say that over time they were like the tweet from the Lakers account that announced Bronny's drafting got more Twitter likes than the Celtics. We won the championship tweet. Damn, rent free, huh? <laughs> just just rent free. Hang, Celtics living the rent free in their Bronny. head. You know the Lakers Wikipedia page still says they have eighteen championships. Um, uh, does it? It says eighteen. Oh, the Wikipedia page. I thought you said yeah. the social media page. No, the Wikipedia page. Still says 18. It's in, it's embarrassing. Look at this. 18 championships because they added the NBL. Woo. <laughs> Fuck it. Well, in fairness to the Lakers, they're not in charge of that page. Whatever. But it is ridiculous. <clears throat> so dumb. <sighs> Give them back to Minnesota, man. <clears throat> Losers. Um... I think there's something else, but I can't remember. So, oh, this is just a funny chart. I just saw it on Twitter. Added and subtracted value from this past NBA season uh, in terms of like contract, etc. Ooh, okay, I like this. Look at the bottom, Sam. Look at our boy Benny Ben Simmons. Simmons and Zach Levine right there. Big Sam was right moment. Well, Julius no, Randle. The, the context with this is this because these guys barely played. It's less like if they're good and more because. They they are paid so much but didn't play on the court. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <clears throat> um, Tatum up here. Derek White for his contract is the highest Celtics in terms of value on the list. Um, Steph was even, which is crazy considering the Warriors were mid. Um, trying to see who else. Damn, to be on an eight million dollar contract and be that far below for George <laughs> Yang is crazy. That's insane. <laughs> Sorry, George Yang. <clears throat> Sorry, brother. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody else of note on here. Fred Van Vliet being a positive with his contract is nuts. That's that's on a really, team that wasn't very good. Yeah, that is that is really crazy. Um. Anyways, I don't got any other atlas. You got anything else? Uh, no, I don't. All right, well, I did, but I don't. In that case, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll let Sam take it out. Hey, thank you very much for listening and watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We're going to be in, be doing summer league little previews for you guys with the different guys on the roster, so keep your eyes peeled for those. We have the full pods Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and then when the season's on, we'll have game recaps morning after each game. You can also uh, leave a like, comment, and again, subscribe, because we would appreciate it. We'll be here for you. You can find us on Spotify and Apple. Those pods and game recaps will be there for you when they come out. Uh, Leave a five-star review. We'd appreciate it. Email hbtcpod at gmail.com. You can send us your thoughts on the Summer League, guys. You can send us your thoughts on any moves the Celtics make or don't make. Send us your Atlas. We would appreciate it. You can find us on socials at How About Them Seas. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook's the name of the pod. Streams are there. They're on YouTube, and they're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's One NBA. Mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. It's a fun.